Kia ora. The myths that I will be talking about today are the death of Heracles, as told by Barry Powell, and Witi Ehemaida's retelling of Maui's death in the myth Maui and Hininui Tepo. The death of Heracles is a Greek myth about Heracles dying at the hands of his jealous wife, Dionata. Dionata accidentally poisoned Heracles, thinking she was giving him a love potion. Tired of dying a slow death, Heracles asked to be set on fire and was taken into Olympus to be an immortal god, while Dionata killed herself in guilt. The Maori myth of Maui and Heninui Te Po tells how Maui attempts to achieve immortality by defeating the goddess of death, Heninui Te Po. He planned to climb inside her through her vagina and take out her heart, but as he attempted to do so, she woke from her slumber and accidentally crushed Maui to death in her fright. According to Shapiro, Hercules was an important to the ancient Greeks and was worshipped as both a hero and a god. Evidence of this was found in the form of burnt effigies as offerings to Hercules on Mount Etna, the place in which he was said to have died. Mahuika suggests that Maui is the most important cultural hero in the Maori mythology. The legend of Maui was prevalent across many cultures and countries in the Pacific. However, this particular myth seems to exist solely within Aotearoa, New Zealand. Shapiro suggests that the myths of Heracles' death may have been used as explanation for how a hero becomes a god. There's also the comparison of his suicide to a sacrifice to the gods. The myth in general seems to signify that even an imperfect demigod can too become an immortal in Olympus. Whereas with the story of Maui, Ehemaida tells us that Maui ignores normal social protocol and convention when approaching Hene, and the price of ignoring Maori customary practices was death. Perhaps this story was meant as a warning to adhere to traditional Maori customs. Ehemaida also suggests maybe Maui's punishment was a warning to all would-be rapists. Both myths were originally transmitted orally, which means that there is space for them to evolve and change depending on who was telling the myth and who the audience was. There are some notable similarities between the roles of the heroes in Greek and Maori culture. For example, both were seen as a type of hero no matter what their faults or wrongdoings. Both have to complete a list of deeds or challenges in their youth, showing that even demigods must face many challenges in their lives. Both of the demigods were also quite misogynistic, as evidenced by Hercules' womanising and Maui's attempted rape. He might have mentions this misogynistic view of woman and suggests that the story also reveals the power of woman. Interestingly, it was woman who ended the mortal life of both of these great demigods. However, as a point of difference, it was Maui's quest for immortality that got him killed, while it was Hercules' death that made him an immortal god. In conclusion, there are several similarities between these two tricky and heroic demigods. However, it appears that these particular myths had different messages or themes for the Greek audience and for the Maori audience. The story of Heracles seems to be an explanation for how one can achieve immortality if they honour the gods, while the story of Maui warns of ignoring traditional customs. I would also add that given Ehemaida's retelling, Maori seem to be much more sympathetic to Hininui Te Po's accidental killing of Maui, while Dionata was punished with death even though her accidental murder of Heracles made him immortal, perhaps suggesting a very different view in the way that woman was seen between these two cultures.